Hello friends, it's Jeanette with Vivo Vintage Designs. Welcome to today's video. Before we get started, let me remind you that all the products used will be listed in the description box along with links. So if you have any, if you have any questions regarding the products you see me using, take a look down there. And if you have any questions regarding the techniques you see me use, leave it in the comments and I'll get back to you as soon as possible. Okay, so I've been asked to do a video on um, doing a flower on tile. And this is perfect for the beginner. If you just got your first set of alcohol ink and you don't know what to do with it, go to the Home Depot, Lowe's, your local hardware store and get yourself some tile. And the reason that you want to use tile to practice is because you can easily wipe it off. And I'll give you an example here. I did this flower. I may not be able to wipe this section off because this was um, acrylic ink, not alcohol ink. So it might be a little difficult to wipe it off, but just so you can see what I mean, if you spray it with some alcohol, it will reactivate the ink and you can wipe it off. So it'll take a few more sprays than I did here, but you get the idea and you can start again. So that's why working on tile is wonderful for the beginner. I've also been asked, what would you use this tile for once it's done? If you like the way it looks and you want to save it, you can use, hold on one second, I'll be right back. You can buy these little easels at um, Michael's or on Amazon and I'll put the link for these larger ones that I have on the in the description box below but you can set the tile on an easel and display it in your home if you like the way it looks and you want to use it as a coaster I would recommend a smaller one of course you can use them as coasters you can put cork backing on it or those little um, silicone tabs and use it as a uh, coaster but uh, you would have to seal it with I would say about three coats that's what I prefer of uh, the Kamar varnish and then three coats of the UV protection and then you would have to use some resin I like um, art resin but there are many other brands out there but you have to make sure that whatever resin you use is will withstand heat from something hot if you're going to use it as a trivet if you're going to use it as a coaster for a, a hot cup of coffee or something, I think it should be fine. In any case, we're not going to use the airbrush today. We're going to use the uh, Ranger hand uh, blower. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to put down some ink in the center here. This color is called Crimson. I like my red flowers. So I will dry it. And the reason you dry it is because you want it not to spread too far. In the description box, I'll also put a link to a great set of uh, alcohol inks. It was the first set that I purchased when I started. And um, it has good colors, and if you're just getting started or you're curious, it's not very expensive, and it's a good start. Then I'm going to put a little sunshine yellow here and there. Just because I want some of these petals to look kind of orangey. And I'm going to dry that as well. It's okay if your colors blend together. because in some areas I'll get more red petals and other areas where there's yellow I'll get the orange petals because of course red and yellow make orange. Okay, so let me fill my alcohol. And um, if you're just starting Using a bottle like this 
is ideal because what I do is I take a hammer and I flatten the tip so it releases less alcohol. This bottle here releases a large amount of alcohol. And if you're just getting started, um, I recommend that you use something like this so you have more control of the alcohol. All right, so I'm going to put down a large amount of alcohol here, and then I'm going to use my hand blower and blow out my first petal. And I'm gonna blow it right off the tile. And making sure that it's completely dry. Don't worry about the edges because we will clean that up. And the reason I'm using this instead of my airbrush is because, again, this video is for the beginner. So if you're just trying alcohol inks out for the first time, you don't want to spend $100 on a compressor. This is about $14 or $15, and it creates beautiful flowers on tile. I prefer this over my airbrush when I'm working on tile. So put your alcohol down. Again, I, used a lar I made a large puddle. Let it sit for a moment so it softens the ink, and then blow it out. And you can make your petals wider by angling the air flow. And again, make sure it's completely dry. Kind of like that petal even better. So a large amount of alcohol, let it sit for a moment and then start blowing it out. And you can say that I can make my petals wider by changing the angle of the airflow. I'm also using 99% alcohol. You can use 91%, but I don't recommend using anything less than 91 because there's too much water in it and um, it won't work well with the inks. So I'm just going to go around the entire tile, blowing out my petals. And you see now where I put that yellow, how it shows up, how pretty. And if you want softer petals, don't let the alcohol sit too long. Start blowing your petals out as soon as you put down the alcohol. So watch, put it down and I'm gonna start blowing it out. Make sure you blow it right off the tile because if you don't, you get these funny lines like I just did there because I didn't um, I didn't see the alcohol. But that's okay because we can blow right over that with another petal. So there's really no right or wrong way to do this. If you make a mistake, you can go right over it again and I'll show you. I'm not crazy about that petal there, so I'm going to put a little bit more alcohol down and blow another one right over it. I'm going to do another one right here. And as I mentioned, don't worry about these edges so much because we can clean that up. And okay, I think I'm pretty happy with that. So now I'm going to use a little um, pitch black. You can use regular black or whatever dark color you like because I want to create a little shadow around the center 
so that I have a good base for my center. So I'm going to let that spread a little bit on its own. You can, once it reaches the shape or it spreads out as much as you're, you would like, take your dryer. And I'm putting it on the low setting, warm. A lot of people like the cool setting. I prefer the warm setting. Don't use it on hot. Um, it'll blow the ink all over the place if you're not careful. Okay, so now I'm going to put down a little bit of alcohol. Well, actually, let me put down a little bit more. And I'm going to blow that black out. And it makes your flower more dramatic. Make sure you blow it all the way to the end. But you see this nice shadow that it makes around the center? That's the perfect base for... Um, your flower center. So you're blowing over the other petals and you may ask why why didn't I do this from the beginning? Because there's going to be areas that will not be covered by this black that I still want underneath to look as um, petals underneath. You know, the flower has many layers. You can do this any way you like. You can start out with the black in the center, put your red down, put your yellow, and then put a drop of the black in the center. But as you can see, here's um, one of the petals that I blew in the beginning, and it does show underneath. Again, here's another one that was um, underneath. And one last petal here. I need a little bit more alcohol. The more alcohol you use, the wider your petals will be. So make sure you practice using a little bit of alcohol and more. I'm not crazy about the way that looks, so let's blow this out again. And that's the beauty of working on tile. You can just keep going. Okay, I'm not crazy about this area here. So again, because it's tile, I can put down some more alcohol and you can actually do this on paper as well, but it's so much easier when you're working on tile. So just blow another petal right over if you don't like the area. Okay. So now we have our shadow, we have our lighter petals underneath, it looks kind of dramatic, and now I'm going to, because I lost some of the black in the center, I'm just going to use a micro brush, I'm going to put a little bit, it's an old one, it's used, but I'm just going to use it to um, put a little more black in my center. You can use a Q-tip. Um, a brush, whatever you like. You don't have to have a micro brush to do this. So, again, I just put down, you can even use your finger. I'm just softening it with my fingertip. I don't want it to be a harsh line. So you can see how it softens the edge by doing this. And then, of course, you end up with a black finger, but that will come off easily with a little alcohol. Okay, so now let's create the center for our flower. 
I'm going to use snow cap. Where is it? Oops, sorry about that. And the reason I'm using snow cap is because it's a mixative and it has a thicker consistency than the inks and it creates a very nice center. So you, uh, there's also Blanco Blanco, and I think that's by um, Pinata, and it's a thinner consistency, so it's not perfect for a center, but if it's what you have, it's fine to work with that. Also, I've been used, I've been asked what you can use in place of a micro brush. I have dotting tools, and let me see if I can find one for you and show you what that looks like. There we go. So this is a dotting tool, and it has this little ball on either end, and this particular set came with, I think, five of them, and each end has a different size tip or little ball on the end. So you can use this, and I'll show you how this works. You can start adding your dots, but because it doesn't absorb the ink into the metal, of course, you're not going to get the same effect that you do with a micro brush, but it's still very pretty. So you can just um, start dotting. And I'll put the link for this particular set that I bought. It was very inexpensive in the description box. So take a look at that. I'll also put the uh, link for the micro brushes in there. And the micro brushes, I think I get 400 of them. And um, they're again, they're not expensive either. So this just takes a lot of time, but it does work nicely as well. I prefer the micro brush. But these dotting tools are less expensive than the micro brushes and they are reusable, whereas the micro brushes are not. So if you're on a budget, it's something to consider. And usually when I do my centers, if you watched um, any of my other videos, you know that I do layers. But uh, doing layers with the dotting tool is not so easy. It's, again, very time consuming. But, is a, but it does uh, make a pretty center. It's different. So I'm going to finish this out. Let me switch over to a smaller tip because now I'm getting to the area where I want my shadow. So I want less dots in that area or smaller dots. Now let's put a little bit more ink on here. And I'm just using the bottom of a plastic shot glass. You can use whatever you like. Okay, so let's, I'm gonna continue doing this one with this dotting tool. Just so that you see something different than, than what I usually do. So because I want my light to be coming from this direction, I'm going to keep this area up here lighter, more white dots, and then less down at the bottom because that's where my shadow is. And if you want your center to be a different color other than white, this is what I do. For instance, I, you can take a little bit of a different color. I'm using a drop of yellow, the sunshine yellow that I used before. And 
I'm going to mix it with a drop of the snow cap. So here I have both colors and I'm just going to mix it. And now I have a yellow. So you can, let me wipe this off, add a couple of little yellow dots in there. It doesn't always have to be white. And what happens with, when you're doing a center and you've used uh, pitch black or any dark color for your center, it, the black underneath will begin to absorb the white that you're putting on there in most cases. So you can always go back and um, add more layers. Let me switch to the smaller tip now that I'm at the bottom. So you can say it takes a while to do this, but if I were using a micro brush, it would be a lot faster. So that is a center using um, a dotting tool. Now that that's done, I'm going to go back and I'm going to use a micro brush. And I'm just going to do it right over this. And the micro brush creates small, um, larger dots. And what I do is I start where I want my light to be in that area. And as I move down and need to reload my brush, I add less dots at the bottom because I want that area to be darker as though it's in shadow. And you can go out beyond the center if you want to do some softer centers. Let me switch out to more white because the yellow is now blending. So I'm going to switch to just white and I'm going to clean off my little micro brush with a little bit of alcohol to get some of that yellow off of it. And I'm just going to dab it to dry it off a little bit and then I'm going to come in with just the white. Let me dry this. I do recommend drying in between your layers. And I want this to be a little bit more white on top. So I'm just going to put a little bit more ink. Oops, making a mess. And just add a little bit more white up here. And I switched to my dotting tool because it makes these nice, crisp white dots. And I want some of those.
I think creating the center takes more time than creating the flower because of the multiple layers that you have to do. But if you just do one layer, your center doesn't look dimensional. It doesn't look like it's standing out from the flower. It just looks flat. And adding the bright white gives it depth and makes it pop. Okay, so I think that looks pretty darn good. So I'm going to leave it alone. Let me use this cap dough. All right, and now I'm going to show you how I clean up the edges of the tile to finish it off. I'm sure you've, if you've watched my videos in the past, you've seen me do this many times. So let's get all this stuff off my paper. I'm going to take a paper towel and I'm going to wrap it around my finger like this. And then I'm going to put some alcohol on the paper towel and I'm going to run my finger down the side of the tile. And you'll have to do it a few times and switch the paper to a clean area. And then you get that lovely sound that sounds like uh, nails on a chalkboard. So turn your tile and use the side of the tile as a guide. So make sure you keep switching to a, a clean area. Do not put the, <laughs> the alcohol on the paper towel over your tile because I've ruined tiles like that with the uh, alcohol splashing on the tile. So make sure, oops, went too far. That happens. But I can fix that. Let me cut this so that I have less. So you can make your borders as wide or as narrow as you like. Sorry about the sound, but it's unavoidable. You will have to go over it a few times because if you don't, all you're doing is just spreading the ink. So continue turning your tile. Find a clean spot, uh, spot on your paper towel. God, that's horrible. <laughs> and this is how you clean the edges, those ugly edges, and create a really pretty border on your tile. And again, you can seal this with three coats of the Kamar varnish and three coats of the UV protection. Make sure you allow it to dry in between and use light coats, not heavy coats. You have to make sure that you cover the entire area with the varnish before you use the uh, UV protection because the UV protection has alcohol in it. And if you haven't completely covered the tile with, or even your paper, with the varnish, once you spray the UV protection over it, it will reactivate the ink and it can ruin your painting. So again, um, I usually wait hours in between my layers of the varnish and the um, UV protection. And then if you're happy and you want to seal this with um, resin, you can do it. Just give it a few days to, to cure completely and then you can resin over it. You can put it on, like I said, an easel and use it as uh, decor in your home or you can use it as a trivet 
I don't know if you can see this, but um, it's, it's really nice. And I take these little um, uh, easels and I decorate them. I paint them and I use um, molding that I make out of paper clay. There's a video somewhere in my playlist where I show how I do this, but you can take a very inexpensive easel and make it look very nice. So um, again, it's really great to display in your home, give as a gift or use as a trivet or a coaster. And that is a flower on tile. I hope you enjoyed this video and you give this a try. If you have any questions, leave it in the comments. Please don't forget to like, comment, or subscribe. Your interaction is very helpful to my channel and I greatly, greatly appreciate it as well as your support. Thank you so much and I'll see you in the next video.